y'all know what it is. Jay Williams, Let's Live Life, and we're back. So Virginia's decided to abolish the death penalty. Now, considering I was at the prison here in Virginia where executions were taking place, the only prison in Virginia where inmates are executed I was there for a long time. I watched men walk in and come out in black bags. I watched the DC sniper walk in and several days later be brought out in a bag. Let's relive it. Now before we even start, I'm gonna go ahead and give you my opinion, my thoughts, my two cents on what I think about the death penalty. Everybody's not gonna agree with me and I don't expect you to. That's what keeps this real. That's what, you know, makes it what it is. Your opinion matters just as much as mine. Just because I feel some type of way don't mean it's right, don't mean it's wrong. It means it's my opinion. I personally think there are people that do not need to be here on this earth. And that there is no place for them on this earth. And for people that disagree, I say that to the majority, the masses of people that would say it's wrong are people that have never met or dealt with someone of that caliber in their life. I've met men that do not need to be walking this earth. That if something was to happen, the world was to shut down, and somehow these guys were to get loose from prison, a whole lot of people would die. I've met men that have killed while incarcerated. Men that have killed children. Children, more than one. Men that have killed women. Men that have killed men, women, and children for no reason. Monsters are real, but they're not what you think. They're not what you're used to seeing. It's not the creepy figure under the bed with the long fingernails or the pair of eyes poking out the closet when you're a little kid. The monsters are the ones that walk amongst us that do things that are unimaginable. The guy Ricky Gray, if you don't know about Ricky Gray, I'm going to throw a clip here in a couple minutes. But Ricky Gray killed the Harvey family here in Virginia. He also killed another entire family, him and his friend. But once they got the conviction on the Harvey family, they never pursued the second family he killed. It's all there. You can go read it and watch it yourself. Who would argue that a man that could torture and kill two little girls and a wife in front of the father in front of the husband and then murder the husband in a very grotesque way who can argue that that's a man that should get to just go on and live his life say you're against the death penalty someone breaks into your house in the middle of the night Beat your kids to death with a hammer. Kills your loved one. And you survive. Which is not what happened in this case. But say that happens. Would you still be saying. Oh no people don't. We don't have the right to say who lives and dies. Neither did he. Would you still be saying. Oh he should go to prison. And we'll just let him rot in prison. And let our tax dollars. And the money that they take out your check every week. Make sure that he sits up in there and eats. Should he be able to sit around and laugh and smile and joke and play? As you and everybody in your family are torn apart. And just completely ruined for the rest of your lives. My opinion? No. Like I said, I've met men that serve no purpose in this world. But to kill. Men that kill without reason. Give y'all a story real quick. 
so y'all can get a better understanding of what it is like being housed at a place that kills people. Now at Greensville Correctional Center, located in you know Jared, Virginia, that is where you go to die. That is not where they keep you prior to you dying. Prior to that, you're probably going to be a Sussex One, somewhere of that caliber. A lot of the death row inmates are housed at Sussex One. What happens is 72 hours before you are set to die, they load you up, take you to Greensville. Well, with the part of the prison I was in, I was in 7 Building, and right beside 7 Building, on the, or outside of the rec yard, is what's called 10 Building. That's the hole. Now, at the back of 10 Building, there's a gate that opens up, and there's three fences we got, but they drive in between the two. They pull up to this gate, they open the gate, and they pull up in there. With the DC sniper, they did the same thing. We were out there walking the yard. I just finished working out. And you know when somebody's about to be executed, it's all over the news. It's word around the prison. And they bring them in in a small van. We see this van come past us, and we already knew who was in it. And dudes felt some type of way. I'm not alone in the way I feel. And you're going to hear this through the story I'm about to tell you. This van pulls up. And we're literally at the fence looking at the van. And the van is about 25 feet from us. And you've got this back door to the hole where they lead the man that's going to die into that door. Take him to the cell that he'll be held in for the next 72 hours before his, you know, execution is handed out. He gets off this van and he thinks that he's just going to stand there and enjoy the the nice day, the sunny day, look up at the clouds, get him some fresh air, because that's going to be the last time he ever sees the sky. It's going to be the last time he ever gets fresh air, a glimpse at the trees, the grass, other people in large crowds, which is all of us on the yard. And as they escorted this man out the van in these shackles, dudes went off. Or you're going to die today. Yeah, you're going to die. They got something for your ass. You here now. And dudes are screaming this at, at this dude. You know. Uh, I believe his name is John Muhammad. Telling him, yeah, you're going to pay. You're going to pay. Kill all them people, man. They'll kill your ass now. Dragging him. I was in the mix. We were screaming everything you could think to, you know, scream to somebody like that. This is a man that terrorized Virginia surrounding places had a 17 year old boy out there gunning people down killing people at gas stations grocery stores and all for nothing they say he had a, a bigger plan to it you can look into it if you want but they would walk him in the death row next time I would see him would be on TV the night he was executed they had so many people out in the parking lot, camera crews, people protesting the death penalty, all this going on. And as I'm watching this unfold on TV and they locked us down that night that he was executed, nobody was allowed out their cells. There was no movement. Almost 3,700 inmates, every single inmate's locked in his cell with his cellmate. I'm watching this unfold on the news and I can look out my window I see all the people and the chaos taking place in the parking lot. The same thing I'm watching on my TV, I can see in a distance taking place. I can look at my TV, look out the window, and see the same thing in real life time taking place. You got the people out there that are picketing and chanting so loud that with my screen open, my little window cranked open, I can hear it. They go ahead and they take him in and they execute the man. Next thing they do is, before that, you see all these little golf carts, little vans, driving to the back of death row. 
And those are family members on those golf carts. The warden, victims, families. You've got, you know, priests, people from the prison. All these different people going to watch this. And I'm looking at the hole and I'm watching white people, black people, young people, and old people step off these golf carts and walk into the back of death row, anticipating watching the man that destroyed their lives and caused everybody so much pain. They're there to watch him meet his maker. A short time after that, everybody comes out watching the news. He's been pronounced dead. Everybody gets back on the golf carts. They get back in the little vans that they drove in on. And I guess for the most part, the most severe punishment has been handed out. If you're ever going to get any type of peace, in my opinion, it would be knowing that the person that did this to the people you love, the person that's responsible for them dying, is no longer here. After all those vehicles vacate, it's usually about an hour, hour and a half, and this big, black, like, old school medical Jeepers Creepers looking truck with this loud diesel engine comes driving through the outsides of the fences. It's all blacked out, nothing on it, and you can hear it coming down. It pulls over and it backs up in to where the back door to death row is. You keep watching. You see the double doors come open. You see them come out with the gurney with the bag on it. They open the double doors on the back of this black Jeepers Creepers truck. And they push the gurney up in there so that the body can be taken to the morgue. I've seen this over the years. I couldn't tell you how many times. It had to have been upwards of anywhere between 15 to 20 times I witnessed that truck go there, the families go there, and that gurney come out with that body on it and go into the back of the last truck it would ever be in other than the hearse that takes it to wherever it ends up at. So before we go any further, I'm gonna show y'all a couple clips. And then a clip from the DC Sniper movie they made, all based on facts. This next one's on Ricky Gray. of individuals who kill small children are those who have no concern at all for humanity.
Take it easy, killer. What you just saw was a preview of an actual like movie documentary they did on Ricky Gray and his nephew. His nephew had just been released from prison after 10 years. And it was on a, a preview of a movie they did called Killers in the House. A lot of people think that when it came to Ricky Gray and them, it was just the Harvey family that they murdered. When in reality, it was nine people. They only sought out the Harvey family because that's what they had the most evidence on. And these boys had already been given the death penalty. His nephew was sitting up Red Onion right now with a life sentence. But they killed so much more. Ricky Gray killed his own girlfriend. And they found her in a shallow grave. There was another whole family killed. There were people attacked. And it eventually ended with the Harvey family murder. The type of person it takes to harm a child, to kill two children, much less human beings for no reason, is not anyone that you want walking around out here. You'll say, well, put them in prison the rest of their life, but keep them alive. Because I guess keeping them alive is better than them being dead. Let me tell you something. Anybody that can intentionally kill a child serves no purpose in this world. They don't deserve the next meal, the next breath, any of that. They deserve everything that's coming to them and the hell that waits on them after they leave this earth. I have no pity on anybody that could do something like that. So what they're going to do now is you can go out here today if you want. Stand on top of a school in Virginia. Open fire. Mow down 50 kindergartners. And they're just going to put you in prison for it. It's not my decision to make. It's not my call. Like I said, these are my opinions. I've met some sick, sick dudes in prison that shouldn't be in prison. They shouldn't be on this earth. But once again, hey, what do I know? I'm just somebody that's met these dudes, dealt with these dudes firsthand. I've seen what they're capable of doing once incarcerated. I've heard them talk about things they've done that'll turn your stomach. With prison, you never know who you're gonna end up in the cell with. I've been in the cell with a lot of murderers, a lot of guys that committed heinous, heinous acts. But I've never been in the cell with anybody that did anything to a woman or a child because I wasn't gonna stand for it. Y'all might allow them to be in prison and live on, but I'm not gonna allow them to live around me I'm not going to allow them to sit in a cell and laugh and watch TV and go call their loved ones knowing what they did. No, stay away from me. I know guys that will never come home that got the same life sentences as the guys that kill people. And these guys I mentioned that will never come home, some of them never killed anybody. So you're going to tell me Somebody could run around and rob a bunch of banks, steal a bunch of stuff, and that his punishment should be the same as somebody that can murder some kids. Y'all need to wake up. Things like this are put into play to try to keep people from doing shit like this. It's the fear factor in knowing, man, if I go do this, no matter what you're thinking or whatever, in the back of your mind, it should be that they're going to kill my ass. I'm going to go on death row. You pull that away, and a man knows now he can do whatever he wants. And the ultimate punishment is that he goes to prison, 
goes to commissary, orders a television, makes some friends, walks the yard, and lives out the last of his days here on earth. It's a crazy world we live in. Huh? I don't condone murder in any way, shape, or form. I've said it in the past. I can understand why somebody could commit murder. If you did something to my family, killed somebody, you know, in my household, your best wish could be that the police would find you before I did because I would 100% take you up out of here. Does that make me a murderer? It makes me somebody that committed murder. It doesn't make me a murderer. It doesn't make me somebody that's out here looking to kill people for no reason. And there's a lot of people out here like that right now. So many murders go unsolved every year. For whatever reason, they go unsolved. Not enough evidence. Something went wrong in the trial. Call it what you want. But then you've got, to this day, we've got active serial killers. Dudes that go around preying on whoever because they haven't been caught yet. And you mean to tell me that once they do get caught, that's just it? You just lock them up? If my dog attacks somebody's child, let's say Max was to chase a kid down the street and bite that kid. He doesn't have to kill that kid. He doesn't have to even seriously injure it. He can just bite it. They would take my dog and put my dog to sleep. Who would you say knows better in this situation? A human or a dog? If you have a dog doing it, it's like you blame it on the breed. Or you blame it on the owner. But when a human does it, it's just, oh, that's messed up. Why do he do that? I'm going to get out of here, man. The subject kind of irritates me. I just wanted to speak on it. Put my two cents in. But anyway, these detention centers, these prisons, these facilities, they're all just crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And as always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones and awesome real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Y'all know how we do.